Here we go. We are in Ein Yaakov and the Gemara Brachot 53a3 in the Oscar. It says, Tana Rabbanan, the rabbis learned in a Brita. <clears throat> so let's say people are sitting in this base matters, the study hall, and it's Shabbat, uh, mostly Shabbat. It's Saturday night. What happens? They view or lift and the light, the candle was brought before them. And they now have to say Havdalah, correct? That's what happens most of Shabbat. So what happens is Beit Shammai Omrim, Beit Shammai says, Kol Echad Ve'echad Mevarech La'atzmo, each one says the bracha Borei, well if I follow Beit Shammai, Borei Ma'or Ha'esh, but let's follow Beit Shammai, Beit Hill for this, Borei Ma'or Ha'esh, for himself. In other words, we don't make an all-inclusive bracha. What do, we do, what do we do normally? Let's understand what we normally do. We make Havdalah. How many people say the bracha, Barei Mira Ha'esh, or Bipra Gafin? One, One person says, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. And they therefore exempt themselves. Yeah. Yes? You do that? Daniel Yankov? You always say Amen, right? Always say Amen to a bracha that you hear. Okay. So Beit Shammai says we're doing wrong. We're doing wrong. And if I'm sitting in the base matters, we're doing wrong. If I'm in a shul, fine. That's not a problem. But if we're all studying, you shouldn't do that. Beit Hillel says no. One makes a bracha for everyone. Why? Mishim Shanemar Barav Am Hadrat Melech. With, with the multitude of people is the glory of God. And basically what he's saying is, it's a great, he explains it's a greater glorification of Hashem. When a multitude of people perform a mitzvah together, then when each perform the, uh, each person performs the mitzvah individually. Uh, yeah? If you're in a shul, that's fine. Well, this is when we're davening is considered a shul. What happened? What this? What they're discussing really is a case. Where we were all uh, learning. We came to the bad, base madrash mostly Shabbat, right? We that's when we came to the base madrash. For whatever reasons we came, we were there, and we did not get, go home. I don't know what's the case. I mean, that seems to be the case. We didn't go home to make Abdullah for our wives, whatever the case is going to be. Or well, we don't have wives. Maybe we're all from single. Shul. Came from shul, in other words, and went to a different building in the basement for the basement. Right. Either that or the sh you finished davening. In other words, it, it was only <coughs> of recent vintage. When I say recent, by the way, I mean the past couple of hundred years. Okay. And that we were saying Abdullah in the shul. It's really not part of the shul service. Oh, well, people would go home, in other words. Right. You would dava mariv, you would go home, or you would make Abdallah on your own, whatever the case is going to be. And that's how you would do it. So what happened was, for some reason, I'm not sure why, it happened that we started to make Abdallah in shul. It could be for the same reason we make Kiddush in the shul. Originally, the shul was like the Torah center. Namely, it had rooms you could sleep in. Okay. Once the construction is over and we pay off the bills, we'll actually get some beds up there. And people will once again be able to sleep if they're visitors. So when you're a visitor coming through the town, so then you didn't necessarily have a place to eat or sleep. So, uh, well, either way. So the shul would be a place of where wayfarers could go and or travelers. And they could stay in the shul and then they would be fed. So what happens is they would make kiddush. And we don't make Kiddush anymore. But that, in some shuls in HSC, I, I actually, I don't know if that's even to be true. They, uh, I'm not sure if they still do it. In some uh, old shuls, I don't know if, if they still do it there. So you would say Kiddush Friday night in the shul, right? And that would be part, it became part of the service actually. But that was, again, for the people who were traveling through, mm. who didn't have a place to eat, so they would hear Kiddush. And, they, and why did the Chazan say it for everybody? 
Two reasons. One, Barav Amad Adrat Melech, with the multitude of, uh, the, of the people, is the glory of, of the king. Also, people just didn't know how to make Kedish. Oh. Oh. So if you don't know it, you don't In know more it. more modern times, you're saying. Uh, Again, a couple of hundred years. Yeah, yeah. All those reasons put together, so that that way they could have it. So I'm guessing the same thing would apply for Avdallah. If I'm not, if I'm traveling through, oh. it would make sense that the same people who need a Kiddush also need to have Avdallah. And that's maybe how it got incorporated into our tefillah. Okay, by the way, I'll give you one other thing. I was thinking about this. We say every day a special Tehila for uh, Israel, right? After davening, we go back to page 82. We say, Shem, Allah, Mama, Mama, Kim, Kurti, Hashem. I can imagine if that would continue, give it a couple of hundred years, and suddenly that becomes part of the service. And everybody's just doing it without thinking twice. I can see that because a lot of what we do is just that. Kabbalah Shabbat. It was only since uh, 1700s. Isaac Luria. Uh, a little before. Uh, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure what's with him. But Kabbalah Shabbat, yeah. the actual institution of Kabbalah Shabbat became very late. I mean, everybody, I think the 17th or 16th mm -hmm. century tops. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody does it. Again, I don't know how, why everybody was convinced to do that, because you're adding, well, you did a few bar mitzvah, but you're adding a good 15 minutes to a service, yeah. and sometimes longer, 25 minutes, okay. depending on yeah. what you want to sing and how much you want to do it. If you're, if you're oh, a cow bark, you're going to be there for an hour. <laughs> but it's uh, why, and then they came up with the, why we have the structure of Kabbalah Shabbat and so on and so forth, they had to explain it. But still, it's an extra service. Why would you put that in? And why would everybody accept that? And the reason is because we came used to it. And so everybody said, how can you not do it? Okay, so the same thing with Havdalah. Havdalah was thrown into a service which really doesn't belong there. And I'll give you the worst case, the worst part of that is if I exempt myself without Havdalah, I cannot go home yeah. and say it's my wife. And my wife can't say it according to the Ramah because it's not, she's not obligated per se. So it becomes a big halachic issue to start saying it, yet we all do it. Everybody, no, I shouldn't say everybody. All out of town shuls, I'll say it like that, all out of town shuls. We'll do it. I'm guessing in uh, Indy, which is out of town, they all they always did a Havdalah initial, correct? Sorry? Yes. I'm guessing they did it. They do? Okay. Well, it makes sense. Again, I think it's more of the air because they want to show people that there's something called Havdalah. Ah. I think that's really the reason. Uh, and more than anything else. Because people don't necessarily go home and do it. Well, they don't know how to do it. Mm. Okay. So this tells them how to do it. So now that's, so again, back to this argument. If we're learning Torah, so there's an argument as to, why, to whether or not to do this. So what's the reason that there's an argument here? So Rashi, was it Rashi? Yeah. Oh, the, it's going to say it itself. Fine. So the Gemara will, will explain. So Amar. So as the Gemara says, Bid Shlama, Bid Hillel, before Shaitaima, Bid Hillel's position is understandable, for they explain their reason, namely, what the multitude of people is the glory of God. Ela Bid Shammai, my time, why does Bid Shammai say that one should, uh, that we should all say it individually? So they say, Kisavre, the Gemara answers. This is what they would hold. Kisavre mipne bitol beit amidrash. They hold that it is better for each one to recite the bracha for himself rather than having one, uh, one recite for all those present because this would be a disruption of this Torah study, Torah learning in the study hall. How long does it take to see Amen? Well, you have to stop and How long is it to say Amen, no? Uh, two seconds. Two seconds? You're, you're going slow. Um, uh, amen. 
Like, it takes less than one second. How long say the bracha? Baruch Atah Hashem. Time me. Baruch Atah Hashem. Four seconds. That's what you decided. Four seconds. Forget it. Forget, no, no, we only have a bracha. We only see the ish. We only, we're not saying every other, all the brachas are connected. Each bracha is separate. How, what's really Havdalah? Bere for Gafin and the last bracha. Oh, what about the summit? It's not really, it's not part of it. Okay. Hmm. Think about what we do after the Yom Tov. We have Bere for Gafin yeah. and the last paragraph. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I just making Havdalah. So when I be bere me name of that's because of the neshama yitera that's going up to Gan Eden and have a good day. You were gone. So now I'm smelling. I'm getting the shmek. I'm taking a smell because oh. that's supposed to rely or make me uh, wait, wait, wake me up. Is he going to talk about uh, uh, hine? Uh, um, because no. I think the art scroll sitter indicates that. He may that lead in paragraph is not said in shul, but correct. Most people in shuls they, they say it. Correct. Yeah. Again, the reason they're going to say it in shuls, I'm this is my theory, is because people they want to show people how to properly make havdalah. Interesting. Th that's a big thing. Well, in Kiddush Friday night, if you go to a normal shul that's doing it, they they will not start at vayichulu, they will start at the bracha. Really. They don't say vayichulu. So, when think about it, go to any art school, uh, go to any Birnbaum chomish uh, sitter. They just have the regular bracha to Hashem from Berbagaf, and then I they continue been on. Haven't seen the shul on Friday night for so long because actually, so Rabbi Gross's shul in Chicago, they don't, they don't say it in shul. Okay, so what I'm saying is, those who said in shul said it only from the bracha, and then that's it. they didn't say vayichulu. Yeah, I think you're right. When on the other hand, they would make the meal. Everybody says you say vayichulu. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for Havdalah, in the shul you weren't supposed to say Hine. But what would happen was, it's in the Siddur. It's in the Siddur. Yeah. So this is the, the system of Havdalah. So we want to show people this is how you do it. I'm guaranteeing you that's why it happened. That everybody does it. It's only, first of all, it's because it's printed. That's how it's printed. So who, who am I to take anything out? Because like, I'm ignorant, so I don't know anything it's anyway. It's like joke about the guy. It's called for Leah and going up the steps of the demon. <laughs> used to be a all right, all right. So all, all those things, but I'm saying, but here you have rabbis who are watching this happen and nobody's saying anything. So there's no sin against he's saying he may kill Yeshua T. And if people like to sing it out and all this yeah, other Mishagas yeah. that go with it. <laughs> but it's, uh, again, you're, I think it was more educational. I really believe it's more educational. Uh, I have nothing to back that up, but it's uh, it just it makes more sense to me that you're adding something and people are buying into it, so that when they go home, they'll do it properly. Which is why, when it comes to Friday night kiddush, they made a mistake by not saying vayichulu, because some people just go home and say those who just are the rabbi make the bracha. Uh, or whoever the chazan in the shul, they don't realize it's the vayichulu in the world because <laughs> they're only learning everything from the shul. And there, there's probably a big subset of people uh, who are not familiar with things traditional per se that, <coughs> that may want to make a kiddush at home on Friday night and just say, We're a pre Correct, home. correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So the, if the shuls, if it's, <coughs> by the same logic, if I'm right about their logic, they should have said vayichulu also. Yeah. There's no sin of saying Vayichulu. There's absolutely no sin. You're just say, saying testimony to God. And I don't know why it wasn't done, but that wasn't one of the things that was picked on. Hmm. I don't know. But Hine Anoch, Hine Kelishwati was. Okay? Hmm. But the Gemara doesn't even know about th those verses. <laughs> they don't even know about them. But okay, so the first thing we have to understand is the only thing that's Havdala is Bepragafen, last paragraph, Amadim and Kosechol. That separates the holy from the profane. Oh. The other stuff, bare mere eish, is if there's a fire, and I want, I'm recognizing God created fire mostly Shabbat, end of Shabbat. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying it. And then for the the, the, the besamim, it's because my nefesh yitera, my extra soul that I received on Shabbos, is now returning to the celestial home. So I'm saying that to 
uh, give me the wake-up call, as it were, that I, I can carry a little bit with me. So if I don't have it, I don't have it. So now what happened is, I said Abdullah in my tefillah, number one, I said in the Shemona Esri, right? We ended the Shabbos off then. Yeah. Yes? Okay. So once we've done that, we really have fulfilled our obligation, according to the Kulei Deir, according to all opinions. So now it's a matter of going beyond and maintaining that rabbinic decree that we should say uh, Abdullah. So now what happens is, like I said, I already said it. Now I'm going to the base Medrash because I want to learn something. I have to learn Torah. Fine. So and then somebody comes with the flame and somebody stands up and says, Oh, Rabbi Sai, Rabbi Ruch Hashem, Elohim Chalam, Barei Reish. And we all see what I mean. Beit Hillel says, you just killed four seconds of Torah that I can never get back. And because of that, you shouldn't do it. Rather, everybody, when they finish what they're doing, should do it on their own. Huh. For four seconds, five seconds. Now, you can always say that they were like this, Baruch! <laughs> Atah! Blah, 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 blah. And it takes five minutes to say one bracha. You can say that too. And when they're saying Amen, they go, Amen! They, you can do a lot of things. I mean, I could really stretch it out, but I don't think anybody does that for the most part because from what I've seen th uh, throughout my entire existence on this planet, which is a, a speck in the halachic realm, not even a speck, it's, uh, most people do it very quickly. Yeah, they want most to people don't think, even when they think Shema, they don't take an hour to do Shema. The longest person saying Shema takes... 10 seconds. Yeah. That's all it is, 10 seconds. <laughs> Shema Yisrael. Whatever it's going to be, it's 10 seconds. To say of Shimon Esrei, the longest I've seen anybody go is 20 minutes. Ooh, 20 minutes. Ooh. That's all I've seen. Ooh. 20 minutes. No, I shouldn't say that. In the issue. No, but a regular Shimon Esrei. A regular Shimon Esrei, 20 minutes. Tops. Tops! That's really slow. Uh, but there's That's nothing compared to what they used to do in the, in the Gemara. It's been an hour. It's nothing. Wow. It's nothing in, in the scope of things. And at that point, when you're saying it that slow, I mean, that's really meditating. You're yeah, okay, okay, word, okay. My, my, and then you're just going over and over the meanings of that one word. I have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. I have no idea what they are doing for 20 minutes. <laughs> but I have seen Rebbeim go for 20 minutes. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. I, like I said, I have asked, I asked one person who goes 10 minutes. I said, what takes you so long? Uh, I don't want to say. I said, what takes so long? And they told me how they say it. And I said, okay, it, it shouldn't take 10 minutes. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't take me 10 minutes. But then nonetheless, okay, God bless everybody. It's, but the point is, we don't go that long today. Mm -hmm. So what, and so if you have, in my, from my experience, it, doesn't, it shouldn't take long. So we're looking at basically four seconds. And Beit Shammai said for four seconds, Boy. don't waste my time. As, mm -hmm. as your son-in-law said, ah. when somebody wasted his time, he said, you've, kill, you've just killed four minutes of, uh, three minutes of my life that I can never get back. Okay? Ooh. So that's what Beit Shammai is saying. Everybody can go on their own because I, it's more important. By, by the way, he's making a value judgment here. It's more important for me to learn Torah than the mitzvah of praising God publicly. Boy. That's what he's really coming down to. You got that, Daniel? Yeah? If I said it back, if I would ask you what I just said, could you answer me? No. Okay. I'll say it again for you. Thank you. Beit Shammai is saying that it's more important to learn Torah because they are the light, they are the length and life of our days. That's what gives us life. That's our chiyut. Okay? They, that's more important than praising God altogether in this, in this matter. Publicly. 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 That's what he's arguing. That's what the Gemara says he's arguing. And, how, and the Gemara says, I'll give you proof. Tani Namahachi. We also have a brighter like this. Shal Rabban, Shal Rabban, Shal Beit Rabban Gamliel, Lo Ayu Omrim Marpe Bebeit Midrash. The members of Wait, wait, let's ask a question. When somebody sneezes, what do you say? Somebody sneezes, what do you say? 
God bless you, or, or do you ignore them? If somebody sees, what would you do? If I went up to you, would you say, God bless you, or would you ignore me? You would say, God bless you, Gesundheit. or Gesundheit, or uh, Labriut, or uh, what, what would you say, Salute? Uh, um, yasu. Yasu, good. Okay, that's two, two syllables. Good for one. Okay. <laughs> what? Cover up. Cover up. Why would you say cover up? Um, say again? Why cover up, though? Oh, it's, it's, okay. Okay. That's only if it's easy in your face. <laughs> uh, otherwise, when somebody sees it down you know, in the other part of the room, you're not going to say, hey, cover up down there. <laughs> you're going to say, because I'm not even stopping. Okay. So what happens? Uh, so there, if you were a member of Big Robin Gamliel's household, they would not say, Gesundheit or Marpe, he, uh, you should be healed, the one who heals, in the study hall. Why? Because you're interrupting Torah study. Can you imagine? You're in the base madrash. This is Allah, by the way. If you're in the base madrash, you shouldn't say Gesundheit. Because you're wasting time when you could be learning. And he says, So now Rashi says, In the time that they're coming to make a bracha for everybody. So here's really what's going on. Going to Ra uh, Rashi. When you want to make a bracha for everybody, what do you have to do? You have to say, You have to have everybody stop talking. They're in the middle of the thought. Stop talking. So they should have intent. love, And they'll hear from him. And they'll say, Amen. That does take a little, that takes a little second. Yeah. It comes more than four seconds. But still, it's a very small time. I go like this, Rabbi and then Baruch Atta, Savre, Baruch Atta, okay, whatever. And you suddenly all have to stop. Now, what does happen? You've all had this experience. What happens when you're in the middle of a thought and somebody, somebody, oh. and then somebody goes like this? Yeah. Okay, and you look up. What thought happened to your thought? It just poof. It's gone. It's gone. Then you have to say, where were we? Where? Oh, you have to find your place. So now you really did kill a lot of time. Okay, as compared to everybody's watching the clocks, everybody has their cell phone. Where's my cell phone? Everybody has their cell phones out, and they're going like this because they, well, it's not, it's mostly Shabbat. So they all have their cell phones, and they're going, okay, at 1039, everybody. Okay, it's not going to happen, right? 1040. We're not going to do that. If we're all, it's not like we're going to dive a Marv because we want to go home after Shabbos. When it comes to Marv, it's interesting. It comes to the night service ending Shabbos. We are to the second. <laughs> comes to Mincha, comes to Shachar, it's not to the second. People come late, do what they want. Comes to Mairev to end Shabbos. Boom! Yeah. Has to be on time. Okay. <laughs> it's only of the Jewish world, you just have to love. Okay. Nonetheless, that's what we're talking about. So now, what's going on here? The Anaf Yosef. Says we're looking at this Indian of Bittel uh, Midrash. Uh, it says I in Mashkatav Rashi. So look at what Rashi says. And the, the intent of Rashi is Lichora. It's a, it's a uh, question. Why? My Bittel Beis Midrash. Yes, Be'echam Mavarich Yotim Kain. Mavarichin Kol Echali Asma. How is what's the difference? He, practically, he's asking. The Anaf Yosef is amazing. I told you, this one section he really likes because he's really asking hard questions on it. And he says, what is the practical difference between one person making a bracha for everybody versus everybody making a bracha on their own? Practically. Okay, I have to tell you, be quiet, gentlemen. Oh, we're well, going to make a bracha. Okay, fine. So I stopped you in the middle of your thoughts and you're going to make a bracha. As compared to Everybody has to make a bracha on their own. We all have to say the same words. Okay, so if one person makes it and you have a number of people, you get a lot of people saying amen to it. If you're saying it on your own, you're saying the bracha, but nobody's saying amen. I don't know. What, what, what right, so what's the practical difference? 
And time-wise, there seems to be no practical difference. Huh. <coughs> That's what he's arguing for a second. Okay, so then he says, to solve uh, solve in the end, because in the end, they still have to stop their learning. They still have to stop their learning. And for the amount of time there's going to be to say the bracha. Mm -hmm. So So that's what he says. When one, so that's why when Rashi says one makes a bracha, he has to quiet everybody. In order to say the bracha, so it's for that little time that it's to quiet them, that's what we're looking for. But Sarak Lomar, the Yesh Bitl Yotir Me Echad Mavarik Shi or Shiuteva Amen. And it needs to say that there is this uh Bitl Torah is based upon the saying of the word Amen. Sha'onim Zuyotim Masha Yum Bavarkin called Echal the Asma. That's one second more. Or one millisecond, how much to say, yeah. to say amen, then if you will make the bracha yourself, because when I make a bracha myself, I don't say amen. Okay? There's a baror for one word. So you're saying for one word, there's bitl Torah. One word. And that baror, this is clear. Lefi Peshuto, uh, and he says, according to the simple understanding, it's hard to be choshesh, to be suspect of bitl Torah, shoteva acha, for one word. It says hard to understand that. Because of this, they have to bring the the next brighter of Beit Rab and Gamliel. They, they were careful not to say asuta. What, what, what do you call it in your, in, uh, you said Yahoo? Uh, usually we say no, but what was the other word used? I'm trying to think, but um, you have to let me think. Okay, because in Greek, I, I'm I'm curious because we say in Aramaic would be asuta, so it was interesting. It would be the same. So gumkain teva achat. Also, they wouldn't say gesundheit or or God bless you certainly because betul beis hamedrash or muchach the the chashu gumkain the maat rega kazeh. Upashu. And it's simple, it's, it's obvious from that one thing that they were suspect for one word. So what's the Biltal Torah? Not the fact we have to say, shh, everybody. It was the fact that said, Amen. That was the Biltal Torah they were concerned about. Because otherwise you still have to stop, right? Practically speaking, if I make a bracha, I have to stop what I'm saying. There's a candle. Okay, let's finish the thought. Okay, I'll make a bracha. Baruch Hata Hashem, Kalam, Eish. Well, I still kill that amount of time. But because of the extra word I mean, Beit Silos, Beit Shammai said you shouldn't say it. And we look and say, are you kidding? For one second, where do you see that? For one second is built of Taira. It says, you're learning Torah. So the answer is, ah, oh, Rabbi Gamliel, in his yeshiva, they wouldn't even say Asuta. Or or merape or gesundheit or whatever you want to say, cover your mouth. Okay, I hope you wouldn't say that. Somebody sneezing, <laughs> but okay. But uh, cover your dry. Shh, what's happening here? <laughs> yeah, okay, but you wouldn't say uh, whatever the word's going to use. You don't say it, and because that's bit Torah. That's what they want to argue. That's the nullification, of the learning of Torah. Can you imagine being so sensitive? How about we should be so sensitive? To learning Torah that we would want not want to lose it for that one second even. We should, we should be zaycha. We should merit to be as careful as Beit Shammai wants us to be. Beit Hillel said, "Everybody say it together, okay?" And because why? But again, he was going for uh, uh, Barav Am um, Hadrat Melech with the multitude of the people is the glory of the king, and he wasn't so concerned with the Bit of Torah. He seems that that over that. Outweighed, outweighed the problem of Bittal Torah for him. Okay, so it's, but it's, it's a fascinating argument on one word. And again, it shows the sensitivity that we have to have and which overcomes what. So for Bittal, like I said, glorifying God together takes over. For, for Hillel, for Beit Shammai, no. 
Torah, Torah learning is the top, and that's where we have to be. Now, which one do you think is right? Let me ask you. Which one do you think is more important? I'm asking for personal opinions here. You heard the argument. Which do you think would make more sense? That I have to be more concerned about learning Torah, and if so, why? If so, why? What's the argument? Or should I be more concerned with praising God together? And if so, why? You have no idea. Well, which one do you th- let's get to which one do you think is more correct? You heard the argument. You're basing it on your own concepts. Can, well, can we draw a comparison to when um, I forget what the part, uh, Abraham is sitting in front of the tent and he sees the strangers come up, and it's more important to greet the knowledge of strangers. Okay. Uh, it, it, you know. It, and God wants us to behave in a certain way, so it would seem that studying Torah, we're learning how we should behave, so perhaps that's where this is coming from. So you would say that Beit Hillel, Beit Shammah is more correct? You know, we have to learn what we're supposed to be it's doing. It's fine, it's fine. You can go with Beit Hillel, uh, Beit Shammah. So you're supposed to combine learning with doing. <laughs> so you are going with Hillel. That's interesting. Okay, yeah? God, good. so you should spend the time to glorify I hear it, I hear it. And not say that it's a waste of time. Very good, very good. What? Yo, it's Beit Hill, why? Because you have to do what we're learning. We have to do what we're learning, good, good, next. So, I have a sort of a, on an objective tour guide, to learn Torah with him because it has anything to do with it, or it doesn't tell me, but when King David was putting in Torah, he couldn't be killed by the angel there. Why? Because it is the tree of life to those who go, hold on to it. So you go with Beit Shammai. Look at this argument that we're having, by the way. Beit Shammai, and you both have good... Come on, put your, put your sense in. What? I think that even I can't think of anything. Okay, you hold, you hold in the middle, fine. So we have an interesting argument going on. Is it Torah is, as you both were presenting, Torah is it? That is the highest level of service to God. One second. <laughs> highest level of service to God because it is a tree of life that you're holding on to. Or is it, no, no the learning of the Torah is only a vehicle, or as they say in, in, South, uh, as they say in uh, Indiana, vehicle <laughs> to get to uh, the observance. What is it? Is it a vehicle to get to the observance? Or is it the thing? It's an amazing yeah. argument, by the way. Yeah, my comment says, Torah is the Icar. Is Torah the Icar? But that's, my, that's the question. Yeah. He's going with Beit, Beit Shammai. Yeah. That is the Icar. It's the main thing. That's all there is. No. Because you have the other side. You have Pirkei Avot that says ah. it's, it's only what we do with it. The Midrash is not the Ikar. It's the Asse. It's the action. Huh. So, uh, for those... Uh, some, some, wait one second. So, for those who are holding each way, you both have good legs to stand on. But that's the argument that's going on here. That's why I say it's a fascinating argument. We rule one way. Obviously, we rule one way. But there's, and we, we just take that ruling. But it, it's just an amazing thing where you have to understand what they're saying. What is the main purpose of being Jewish? And is it, once I learn it, I have to put it into being, which seems to be where we go. And that's where Beit Hillel is. And that's why Pirkei Avot, Daniel. That's why Pirkei Avot is saying what it does. That the Midrash is the minor, the action is the major, or is it the other way? <coughs> Beit Shammai says, no, the learning Torah is the ultimate service of God. That's the ultimate Kiddush Hashem, to, do, to learn Torah. That's the, that's the argument that's going on. If I waste even one second, even to say Amen, and he's not saying you shouldn't make a bracha, but to see, I made somebody else's bracha, but I'm going to do that. Now, where else does that come to? Oh, you had a question. So I can go, I'm going to go crazy in this. You have to speak louder. The construction is going on. Ideologically, theologically, they both are opposite, but realistically, it's probably a mix of the two. 
Oh yeah, no. Ideologically, they're not so far apart. Right. They're not so far apart at all. They're looking at, they're just looking at different aspects, right. and they're saying which is, which is going to get me to the end goal. Right. Because what happens is I'm sitting in the base madras. What's my point of sitting in the base madras? To learn Torah, so that I can go out. This is what Beit Shammah would argue. So that I could go out and fulfill the Torah. But in order to fulfill it, I have to learn it. And if, and if I'm going to spend my time listening to somebody else do something, even though Barov Am Hadrat Malach, it's true that, again, in the multiple people is the glory of the king. It's true. But if I'm going to allow that to take over my precious time that I've set aside to learn Torah, that I'm not going to be able to understand it at the level I need to, and I won't be able to fulfill it at the level I need to, and I would have cut myself off. So go ahead, what was the next question? Correct, correct. That's why I'm saying, Beit Shammai, for you two, the way you're presenting it, it makes much more sense than Beit Hillel. Ben Hillel's like, uh, no, no, we heard. Somebody says, uh, uh, you have to say, uh, makes a bracha, you have to say, amen. Why? Why do you make me stop myself? Let me learn. I have a little bit of time. I don't have all day. I have five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. That's why Halacha says that I'm supposed to set aside a time for learning. And nothing should interrupt that time. Nothing. Imagine, your, your wife calls, your mother calls, your father calls, the baby calls. Sorry, I have to learn Torah. Now, but when you have children, God willing, that's going to be a great excuse when they have, the baby has to be changed. Honey, I am learning Torah. I said, inside. She'll smack you in the sand of it. <laughs> smack you upside head. And go and clean the kid, clean the kid up. But really, think about that. If we know that we have to set aside a time for, that is sacrosanct. You cannot touch that time to learn Torah. That is the ultimate service, and nothing gets in your way. Which is why what, what we do today is we say, I'm going to learn a certain mount. Okay, so I'm going to do a parsha, whatever I'm going to do. And you, you have to get that done. Dafayomi. Okay, when you're learning a page of Talmud a day. So what you do is you set aside time in the morning, in the afternoon, the nighttime, whatever you're going to do. And you go to that class. And that class, it, it, nothing can move that class. That's what it has to be. That's, that was the beauty of Dafa Yomi, of learning, or any of these Yomis, anything that we're doing on a daily basis. If once you set it aside, you said to God, this is my service to you. This is how I'm going to grow in understanding. This is how I'm going to show my love for you and your Torah. Nothing gets in its way. And that's what Hillel, that's what Shammah was arguing. How can I spend even a second to say Gesundheit? It's common courtesy. It's a brach I'm giving you. You should be healthy. Why do we, by the way, why do we say Gesundheit when somebody sees us? Ah. Right, because originally people would die. when they sneezed, they died. That was the end of it. The, the shovel would go out yeah. and they would die. So once when uh, they when Yaakov, I think it was Yaakov or Yitzchak, I forget which one it was. Uh, I think it was Yitzchak. Yitzchak got sick. Oh, yeah. no, Yaakov got sick. Yaakov was the first one that says he got sick. So when Yaakov got sick, and when he was saw that that's how people die, he said, Hashem, please let us have some warning. That the person is going to die. So what happened was he sneezed, he didn't die. They said Gesundheit. Oh, wait, wait, wait. they didn't use Yiddish. They didn't use Yiddish. They said uh, Merape, okay, but, or whatever language they were speaking. So that that's when they got to you should be healthy. That's what we say you should be healthy. It's interesting that in English it turned into God bless you, but it doesn't really mean it. It means health. You're supposed to say health, not God bless you. But it's it's interesting how these. Uh, you be in health, right? So be in, right. You should be healthy. Health. And that's uh, marape. You should have health. Mm. That's a sutta. 
you should be healed, so on and so forth. It's not God bless you. Well, but that is it. Okay, we understand, we understand. God is blessing you. Right, right, yeah. right. But I'm just saying, people, people <laughs> yeah. rail against God bless yeah. you. Yeah. But we all said, the point is that all of that stuff is taking more time mm -hmm. away from what you, sh what you should be, what you set aside time to do. Imagine that. Even one second, you've killed. So you're not allowed to kill even a second. Yeah. There's another aspect on both sides of this, and that's the communal and the individual. Ah. You know, both responsibilities. That right. You have, that how you behave in public, and that so much of our service to God is individual, but then other parts of it are communal. Correct. And we have mm -hmm. to. So that allocating time to the individual learning makes a lot of sense. This all comes together. You were mm -hmm. saying that both sides are right, that you have to arrange your day and your time to where you can both benefit your own development as a, a human being, but also your social development. Mm -hmm. Right. So that would draw the two together. <laughs> correct. Doing both, but not at the same time. Correct, correct. No, uh, correct. Hillel's not saying that if somebody sneezes. Uh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Shammai is not saying that if you normally hear a bracha, you shouldn't say amen. Obviously, you should hear amen. Obviously, he would hold that in a normal situation. He would agree with Beit Hillel that Barav Am Hadrat Melech. That if you know if you're in a shul, you should listen and you should say amen. You should participate. It's very important to do that. But when I set aside time for learning. That's set of time. That's time for learning, and not for the other stuff. And so the guy, the guy comes in. He wants to make up dollar. He should go into another room, maybe. Uh, no, you can say. Uh, what he's saying is, I don't have to say a main. Don't say, Rabbi Sai. None of my business. You say what you have to. do, I'll do what I have to do. It's my time to learn. That's it. It's my time. You know, we have this uh, in the secular world. They call it quality time. I have quality time. I have to be with my wife. My I have qual that, That's your cheap way of saying, I don't have time for you kids otherwise. So I'll give you 15, five minutes of my life, and then you can talk to me. And whatever you get in five minutes, it's good. That's quality time instead of I'm um, with you constantly. Okay? I'd rather be with my kids constantly than give them this quality time, which <laughs> is a joke. Okay? For all those people out there who are going to yell at me, but that means they've watched for 42 minutes. <laughs> you know, modern life. We hardly have a second of quiet time right. because of phones and all right. kinds of media and interruptions and yeah. noise everywhere. It's that's why we have Shabbos. But that's These the, things are worthless on Shabbos. You know, <laughs> that's maybe what yeah. they're talking okay. about here. Could be. Just like uh, uh, Shabbos is yeah. this where everything is turned off. Mm. Right. You have that introspection. You Correct. Have Correct. And that's really is quality time with your family. We'll have to stop here. Okay. That's very yeah, so I will, what you're saying to